Hello, thanks for stopping by. Uh, here we're going to give a little demo of the Vems, VEMS tune application. And uh, so we'll first start out under the base setup. This happens to be a BMW six cylinder M50 engine. Uh, here we go to the engine setup. Basically, we, we set up the menu so that you just go from the top down um, and from left to right, and you'll get through most of the features. So in, in that scenario, the, the critical features are at the top left. Um, and here's all your maps. Then you're starting in idle, boost control, your outputs, motorsports options, which are generally the last you want to configure. So base setup, engine setup to begin with. Here, the first parameter is your fuel injector size. And we calculate this um, based on the number of injectors, the displacement of the engine, um, and the size of the injectors. Uh, if you hit F1 for the help menu, you can see right here you get the formula to config or to calculate the required fuel for each cycle of the engine. And this is the required fuel at 100% volumetric efficiency. Uh, injector flow rate is just a display parameter, and generally you just set this because you already know the size of your injectors. Um, then your kilometers per liter, or uh, miles per gallon is calculated correctly. Number of cylinders, the engine type, we support even fire and odd fire, and your VE strategy, you can do speed density or, or alpha N for throttle position. For uh, Generally those are used for individual throttle body engines. Um, and you know, just you go through these and most of them, if you're familiar with doing standalones, all these will probably make sense to you. Every modern system has the same parameters, just sometimes a different little or a little bit different wording or a different way to display the data, but they all use the same parameters to get the job done. You can use these shortcut keys here, the, the left and right arrows, in order to go to the next menu. Um, that way you can, you can scroll through these without having to go back up to the menu item. Here's your primary trigger settings. That's one of the, probably the most critical to get right in the engine. Um, you get your rising or falling tooth in your trigger, uh, missing tooth or coil type. Here there's a lot of parameters. Um, a lot of them, top dead center after the trigger, you're either gonna have to measure that, know it from previous experience with the engine trigger, or uh, calculate it or do testing on here in BEMS tune. Number of teeth on the wheel, you have to either know that or count that. First trigger tooth and the TDC after the trigger go hand in hand. If you adjust one, you need to adjust the other one to compensate. Many different ways to get an appropriate value here. Um, one of the great things that we've done is we have configlets here, is what we call them. Um, so this one's a six, six cylinder, 60 minus two with a cam sensor, without a cam sensor, uh, BMW double Venos, S54. Um, we have a lot of them here, a lot of uh, odd ones too. You get the Subaru 36 minus two minus two minus two with the cam sync, without the cam sync, with AVCS. Most of the ones, the popular ones are going to be up here in the top section. The four or six cylinder, five cylinder Audi. Uh, we do the 270 tooth crank sensor. Um, that's that's the way we support the plug and play. We, we had to do that. Next menu item, our next panel here is the trigger settings in a graphical display. Here you can see the first trigger tooth and rotations this way. So you, another trigger tooth and another trigger tooth. And you have your missing here. So your remember in the, or actually right here, first trigger tooth is number four. So here's zero, one, two, three, four. First trigger tooth. If you change that to say 12, then the display is gonna change. So triggers are probably the most complicated uh, part of setting up a standalone. So we try to do the graphical representation here. And we also show two complete revolutions to show a full engine cycle. We have the secondary trigger settings, which uh, normally that'd be cam sync. You can also use this as a primary trigger. If like if you had your primary trigger set up as VR and you switched to a hall sensor and the secondary was already set up as a hall sensor, you can use it as a primary if you only needed one trigger. If you choose a configlet from the uh, the first panel, 
for the trigger settings, the primary trigger settings, then it will auto fill these in if it's a known uh, configuration for the engine you're working with. Here you're selecting your outputs. We have the outputs here listed and the pin number on the ECU itself. So output one is EC36 pin seven, pin 19, pin eight. And you get the cylinder order here. And you have a testing mode, so you can turn the testing mode on and then fire each injector. Turn it on, turn it off. You don't want to do this with the fuel pump running, otherwise you'll flood the cylinder. But it's good for if you unplug the injector and just check it with a multimeter or an oscilloscope or um, keep the injector plugged in but no fuel pressure in the rail. See ignition outputs. Here you choose your ignition channels. You see in this particular car we're using the dual output mode, so it's firing two individual coils at the same time. So my guess here is it was running a coil on plug system and you wanted to run two different coils at the same time. You can shift your outputs here if you get get the outputs in the wrong order. Just shift them up, shift them down. And just like the injectors, we have testing mode. So you can test fire the, each plug. So wideband settings, we have the wideband controller is right built in right into the hardware with the ECU. So all you need to do is wire it up, plug the sensor in. You can even choose a narrow band if you're so inclined to use a narrow band. But with the cost of the sensor of a wide band and all the hardware built in, um, it's extremely rare for someone to use the narrow band feature. And here's all your PID settings. These are all set from the factory, so you don't need to change them. And the free air calibration, when you first install the system, you're going to want to have the O2 sensor out of the exhaust stream, just sitting on the, resting on the fender or something like that. Turn the ECU on, calibrate the sensor, this will be the value you end up with. We have a, uh, a wizard to do that for you. Uh, tools, wideband O2 calibration, it'll show you the steps to go through. Here's our safety features. We got a rev limit, soft ignition cut. Generally, you want the fuel cut to be before the ignition cut because fuel cut's a little bit easier on the engine. Uh, we have an overboost fuel cut for a boot spike. Uh, overrun fuel cut, so you can cut the fuel when near high RPMs, no throttle. Save some fuel there. And again, if you want to have any questions on any of these settings, just press the F1 key, go down through, find the part you, you want to research more about, and it's all right there. The extensive documentation in the help section. And here we get into the second, the tuning menu. We have volumetric efficiency map here. It should look quite familiar to most of you guys. Um, each of these is selectable, so if, if uh, one of these bins doesn't work for you, just edit it, change it. You can increase your resolution um, in any of these areas. The table size is fixed, but you can increase or change each of these bins to wherever you want to uh, tailor it to the engine that you're working on. In this instance, you know, 500 RPM steps was fine up through here. Um, but if you had a problem area, maybe 2700, 2800, you could, you know, move everything up, take a couple of the 500 RPM steps out and do the 27, 2800 in here. If you wanted to do that, you could just do remap. You can change your X and Y values and it'll actually interpolate for you. Um, just changed two values it interpolated everything for me so it's a really nice feature to make it quick remapping this stuff 
you got your ignition maps, lambda target table. This gives you the, the target lambda for a, your engine operation. Um, obviously, it's not as big of a map, but it, it's a, it can be more granular and get the same function. Boost control, you can do closed loop boost control with PID or just open loop with reference DC, reference duty cycle. Um, assign your output channels. You get your actuators, your fan, water pump, fuel pump, your tachometer settings. The motor sports is where you get all the fun features, the wide open throttle shift cut, gear position, voltage table. This is for a, a sequential gearbox where you get an output voltage depending on what gear you're in. Um, Anti-lag control, nitrous control, trans brake, launch control. Um, any trim control, so you can use a potentiometer to trim pretty much anything. Now we'll look at some of the set, the uh, tuning screens. Here you get your volumetric efficiency in the 2D map and the 3D table, so you can see where it's smooth. Um, actually, you got your log player. Here you have your lambda target based on your lambda map, and here's your actual lambda. It's a little bit rich at the moment. Your EGO correction, your exhaust temp, manifold temp, coolant temp. Your coolant temp is only 67 degrees. That explains why it's rich. Your RPM right here, your manifold pressure, your spark over here, your current volumetric efficiency value. You can scroll your log just by dragging this pointer. There you can see this is a log from a tuning session. So a lot of moving around, changing the values. You can see the 2D ignition table here. You can change any of these gauges um, to be anything pertinent to what you want to see. Change gauge data. If you want to see boost duty cycle, it's right there. There we go. You can see the boost duty cycle going. I can can add these. I can do all kinds of um, customizations here. You can change the background colors. You can change the gauge colors. You can change where it goes from yellow to green. Um, or pretty much anything you can change in here. Uh, you can change the gauge data as I showed you before. You can move these around, make it suitable for your your tuning style and how you work most efficiently. You get your Lambda 2D map, your idle air control tuning for your um, idle settings, and we have a log viewer as well. All these are customizable as well. Open descriptor editor. You can see all the parameters. Any parameter that the ECU has available to it can be shown in here. It gets pretty messy if you want to show too much. Um, but you can add more panels in here. Now if you go to the view group, here's all the, the predetermined um, values we have or screens we have um, and then on the right side you can see that they're they have shortcuts for most of them uh, injector calibration will actually show you the individual output that each cylinder is providing for the engine obviously this is a six cylinder engine so your your last two columns are just going to be um, disregarded but here's your first six columns of the engine so one for each cylinder and you can see that they're all very even as far as the contribution of power that they're giving to the engine. You can use this to uh, fine-tune the injectors while they're in the engine running. Or you can see which cylinders might be having some problems, maybe a little bit more blow by than the other systems or uh, something of that sort, maybe a little bit less compression. Here you can see all your your corrections, warm up, gamma enrichment, battery compensation, all kinds of things. It's 
So that's a good overview of what we're looking at. Um, if you'd like to download the software, it's freely available. Just click on the link at the bottom of the screen right now. Feel free to download it, play around with it. There's um, default configs that come with it. So you can load up a config and play around with the settings. Um, view the help menus. The help menus are actually online as well. Um, here's the link for that. And uh, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to our newsletter. Uh, we'll, we send out uh, when we have updates and firmware updates, software updates, um, new releases of Vemstune, um, tips and tricks, new products coming out. And uh, so we try to keep the frequency of the emails very low so we're not bothering you, but uh, keep you informed of what was going on. So I thank you very much for your time. I, and uh, please keep in touch. Thanks.